What's up guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to be doing a restoration on Ghoulie the Yelps. First wave, signature, basic, release, whatever you want to call it. I already have all my stuff together. Um, a lot of this stuff I tried to already prep so I can start cleaning her and restoring her and everything. and. I thought I would kind of make this into a thing. Uh, we'll see how dedicated I get into doing this little series of the first waves, but yeah, Montagulia. And I thought it made sense because I just did Cleo and Deuce, and Gulia, you know, best friends with Cleo. And I like to think that she's really good friends with Deuce as well. So as you can see, I have two of them, because the other one's right here. Here she is. Um, she is missing one of her fishnets, so I will have to eventually do something about that. Um, she is missing her headband as well, but she has her glasses, um, her earrings, her belt, and her clothes and shoes. Now this one, on the other hand, is complete. She's a little bit more messier. Um, but her headband's down here, so we have her headband, her pet, um, her hairbrush, her stand, as well as her glasses, her earrings, her necklace, it's just turned. I'm hearing talk about there being a second wave of the Creep Productions, which will account for Gulia Yelps, so I might wait for that to complete my other Gulia, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay, so to get things started, I'm gonna take the Gulias here, and I'm just gonna start by taking off all her clothes to get her stuff separated and all of her accessories. I'm gonna put all the plastic stuff to the side and I'll keep them separated by each doll for now, but they'll probably just end up getting mixed together eventually. Um, you can keep earrings. I do usually keep the earrings on them, but I think I'm just gonna take them off of her. Yeah, I'm just gonna take them off of her. And take these rubber bands off of her. And then, yeah, I'm gonna just put all the fabric clothes in the bin. So, like her fishnet. So, if I'm remembering this correctly, I feel like this Gulia was the Schools Out version. It was called Schools Out or. There's different names for them, or like you could say second wave, basic, Gulia or whatever. Um, but they just re-released her. I think this is her because I believe all the first waves had a single joint, and this Gulia has like a peg at the end, whereas the originals don't have a peg. It's just a joint. Um, she's also a black elastic. I don't know if that's determined, but I was hearing that the elastics just mean what they had at that time, not necessarily the release. Check out her arm. She has one, she has a peg thing too. So, I don't know for sure, honestly. Yeah, I don't know, I don't have for sure answers, but her elastics are gold, so. I was removing her top piece or her bodysuit piece I saw that there was a tag on her chest I'm assuming it was from the previous owner so
Okay, dude, so from the last clip, you could probably hear that I was freaking out a little bit. I swore before I got to doing this, I remember seeing the Ghoulia with gold elastics. Not that it really matters, it's not a big deal what color the elastics are, it's just more so the fact that I swear that I saw that they were gold, and to look at both of them and see neither of them with gold, one with black and one with white, it just, I don't know, crazy. So here are the clothes, they're going to sit in here, you know, the usual detergent, color, catcher, and, uh, what's it called? Oxy Clean, the stain remover powder. So I'll let those sit overnight, um, but with the dolls here, once you take off their clothes, this is when I'll start to check their bodies and their heads to see if they have any stains or, you know, just some harsh colors that might be stuck inside their vinyl or their plastic so you'll just look around yeah they both look good so I would say this is when you want to expect inspect as well for the hair before you go and washing their bodies because their hair will get wet and it's a little harder to tell but either way you could still figure it out but this is the part before you wash them I would say it's the easiest to figure out whether they need a bo uh, OxyClean boil wash or um, a treatment for their hair like the Goo Gone or whatever you want to use for their hair to get rid of the glue seepage. So you could probably even see from the film, or from the film, from my video, um, how they look. This Gulia, she looks actually really good. I felt her head and it's really squishy almost everywhere. So she really has barely any glue seepage. So that's a good thing, but I'm probably still going to do a basic OxyClean boil wash for her. Obviously being careful of her face and her makeup just to make sure there's no excess, but it's pretty squishy everywhere. There's like a little part here that's kind of rough, but it feels pretty squishy. And then this one, yeah, you could see that it, she definitely has glue seepage. And I do feel her head and it's pretty rock solid, so she definitely has quite a bit of some glue seepage here. So for this footage you can see that I'm cleaning up both the Gulias with both dish soap and baking soda. I'm not going to get into it because I figured I'd talk about my experiences with the first wave or basic releases of Gulia Yelps. So to get things started, I was never able to to get her I actually never seen first wave 2010 release Gulia in store whatsoever so sadly I never had the option to pick her out and buy her um, I do remember really wanting her and was hoping that I like, get her maybe even eventually down the line but yeah I mean I was in the stores at the time because obviously in my last video you know that or my previous uh, one with the restoration I had Cleo and Deuce I got them back in 2010 when they came out but Gulia was just one of the ones I never seen in stores. She was one of the harder ones or rare ones to find. It's bringing me to my point that I never owned or seen first wave Gulia whatsoever. So fast forwarding a little bit into 2011, the school's outline was then released with Gulia and Holt being re-released. So in 2011, my grandma took me to Kmart and I seen her I come across her in the toy aisle. So I was a kid, I didn't have money. I remember wanting her and hoping that I was gonna get her and I was just holding her in the toy aisle. And I was just kind of amazed at the fact like, wow, I actually, I, I see her here. And I obviously didn't get her that day, but that was my one and only chance to ever see her and get her, but I never did, unfortunately. So my grandma took me to Kmart a lot, which I'll get into in a second, but she is the sole reason why I have a lot of my collection. A lot of my 2010 Bratz and um, early off Monster High Dolls were from her solely. I mean, with her circumstances and with dolls in general or toys in general being a luxury, um, let alone getting all of them is pretty much a luxury. Like... My grandma did spoil me a little bit. I know there's people who weren't even able to get Monster High Dolls as a kid, so I'm still forever grateful that she even 
was willing to get me as much as she did, so. Yeah, we'd go to Kmart pretty much regularly, and it was mostly just to browse. Every once in a while she'd like grab something you want, but typically it was browsing, and especially if it was like around the holiday times. I don't know, it's just weird. Like, I feel like 2010 to 2012 era Monster High was so popular, and if you were to ever see Rare Doll, you were lucky to ever see that doll ever again in stores. Like, especially around holiday times, like there was no way. It was, it's just crazy, man. Like, I don't know. now I will say I didn't go to the stores a whole lot as a kid, but enough to know that happened to me. And scalpers were present. I didn't know that was a thing until Torlai and those who are real ones know what I'm talking about. So here are the accessories that I'm getting ready to clean. I was also showing variations of the stand differences. So there's two different variations. There's this one, which is the plus peg, which comes from the later releases. And then there's also the T peg right here, which is from all of the first couple releases of Monster High Dolls from like the 2010 to 2011 era. So only those versions have the T peg. Now as for the clothes, I have the pants already out to dry and rinse. Now as you can see, as for the shirts, I wanted them to soak one more time separately because they have more white in them and I wanted to make sure that there's not as much stainage with them so hopefully that'll help and then the girls are, or the ghouls are right here chilling in this bucket with the borax. I'm just gonna leave them in here because I have a few things that I have to do so might as well instead of just letting them sit out because they're going to be getting a OxyClean boil wash after this anyways. So it's kind of pointless to dry them when I'm going to have to do that to them anyways. Okay, so these have been sitting in dish soap for quite a while. So now I'm just scrubbing them with dish soap just to make sure they're thoroughly cleaned. Um, and dude, I thought I would go in and start talking a little bit more about the one and the only Gulia Yelps. Based on all of the media that we got from Monster High, Gulia was definitely a fave of mine. She wasn't one of my top favorites back then, but now she's definitely up there. I don't know where. Deuce is definitely number one though. I always thought she was super cute and just adorable and just, I just loved her. She's just, yes, period. Okay, let me start with, I love the dynamic between Cleo and Gulia. I think it has very wholesome moments here and there, but the hierarchy kind of thing is a little annoying with Gulia being treated like a servant, but I mean with Cleo's character development I feel like things would have changed for the better for her and Gulia, and I just see it as like it's just for storyline purposes. Gulia's just a wholesome character. She deserves the love. So so Gulia is a pretty nonchalant character, but she feels as strongly with her emotions as anybody else does. She just doesn't express it like everyone else normally does, which I think is so cool and good about her character. Because yes, she has that that separation with her speaking zombie, and everybody else speaks English, or I guess typically just English. I feel like that's where she has a little bit of a disconnect. Especially in her diary, you could tell that she's very thought out with her words and expressing her feelings. And, I don't know, I feel like I could relate to that in ways. Okay, let me update you guys before we get to the next day. So, tonight I'm just leaving everything to dry. Um, I have some of her, I have her shirts on a hanger here. Just drying on like a drying rack. And then I have obviously both of the Gulias here, as well as all her accessories, the little bits and all that stuff, just kind of air drying. I have the fans running as you could hear to help them dry out a little faster. Um, I wanna also update that uh, this Gulia has some, some stuff on her vinyl, or on her plastic, some black stuff that I wanna try to remove. You can kind of see, it's a little bit on her face too, so I'm going to try to do a benzo treatment tomorrow if it's very sunny. So guys, I noticed that my Gulias were different versions, so I figured I'd insert this picture that I made to kind of help differentiate each version. 
feel free to screenshot it, look at it, see the differences. I'm not going to go in detail, but you can look at the eyebrows and see differences between all of them. The eyeshadow is different shades in all of them, and then the lip size. The one indication I'd say is the lip size for the first release is a lot fuller than the others, but I think the 2015 release also has variations of having the full lips as well. But the 2015 you can distinctly tell as well by the eyes. Um, besides the faces, their fashion is similar in the 2010 and 2011, and then the 2015 has very like watered down quality. If you look up pictures, you'll be able to see. Um, but the 2010 and 2011 clothes, the clothes are pretty much the same. So I know you're like, dude, why is it that serious? Like, it doesn't really matter. I personally find it pretty interesting. Um, plus, she's wearing glasses, so I get it. It's not really that big of a deal. Her glasses do cover her eyes, so you won't really see her face too much. But, like I said, I'm a collector. I find it interesting. So, for those who are interested to find out, let me know down below what version you have. And let me know if you just found out based on these pictures. Because it's not really something that's focused on since she wears glasses. And I feel like I don't hear, hear a lot about it, the variations from the different releases because her screening is pretty different from the first and the second release even. Okay guys, it is the next day and as you can see this is the re-release Gulia. Um, her face is all good but like I said yesterday, the first wave one has some of those black chalky scuffs on her face so I decided to put her outside for a benzoyl peroxide treatment. You could probably <laughs> see her she's sitting on that chair getting some <laughs> anyone who would walk up and see that would probably be frightened <laughs> what is that look at her she's so cute <laughs> So in some of these scenes you can see I was doing her OxyClean boil wash here. I also show some scenes of the glue in her head as well as some glue that I ended up taking out of her head. Now here I was showing how when I take off the bodies off the dolls, what I do for the peg that holds the head. I pretty much cut the sides a little bit down and I file it to where it's going upwards so next time when I take off her head it'll be a lot easier. This is my after footage of fixing their glitter eye makeup. First wave Gulia had the worst with most of it was pretty much gone and the re-release was pretty much fine, but I just touched it up a little bit. So here I am cleaning the diaries here. Actually, dude, fun fact, the diary on the left was from the first Gulia that I got, and she was actually from Europe, and her diary is in French. So my first ever Gulia Yelp style was actually Gloom Beach Gulia from the five pack set. Dude, I was so excited when I seen that set. The main reason I wanted it was because of that Gulia. I did have, I think, most of the other ghouls already anyways, but I wanted that, especially because that was going to be my first Gulia doll. I was so excited. She, she was so pretty. I was so happy to get her. She, she's such a pretty doll. Well, guys, I pretty much wrapped it up here. So in other words, enjoy the before and afters. So here we have who we refer to as Schools Out Gulia Yelps. Their hair both came out so amazing, it's so soft, and I'm very, very happy with the results. Um, I'm missing obviously a few accessories for her, but hopefully I can complete them later on down the line.
finally first wave Guya Yelps complete. She is absolutely beautiful. So happy to own her. I officially got her back on November 7th of 2020. That was around the time when I was able to finally be on the secondhand market and officially got my first first wave Guya Yelps doll. Well, enjoy these last little clips that I have of Gulia with the inbox. She's next to Cleo and Deuce, as you can kind of see there. And some little scenes of me just poking my head out, because why not? Thanks for watching. Until next time, see you guys.